rational graphs can get more complicated. And an example we can look at is 1 over, the other day we saw, the other lesson video we saw this. What if I throw in another factor in the denominator? Well, first I'm going to make this little number line sign chart. In this case, the critical values are 4 and negative 2. Those are both places where it's undefined. And if you pick something bigger than 4, these are both going to be positive. So the whole thing is going to be positive. If I pick something way less than negative 2, both of these factors are going to be negative, so their product is going to become positive. But something that's less than 4, but bigger than negative 2, is going to make this thing negative while making this one positive, so the product is going to be negative. Now, a general rule is if the numerator is a constant and the denominator has expressions there, it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Unless, of course, like yesterday, other lesson, if there's like a plus something here, that, that would move the horizontal asymptote up, but that's not what's happening here. There's also going to be vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 4. But what happens next is a bit complicated. I'll take you through the steps. See this plus here in the sign chart? That means that the bigger x gets, the uh, y stays positive. But this red asymptote here says that it's getting closer and closer to 0. So that's why I'm going to draw in arrow like that. It's sort of getting closer and closer. There's also a plus on this other side, so the more negative x gets, y is definitely going to be positive, but the asymptote says it's going to get closer and closer to zero, so that means that this has to happen. Now here's one of the more confusing parts. When you see a u in your sign chart, u kind of means like almost like infinity as far as the graph goes. So if there's a plus to the left of it, it means it's going way up. But on the right of this U, there's a minus. That means to the right of the vertical asymptote, it's going way down. And this U has a minus to its left, which means this happens, going way down to negative infinity on the left. But this U also has a plus on the right. Plus means going way up, but coming from the right-hand side. Now those are really the only four things that can happen. A plus on the left, a minus on the left, a plus on the right, or a minus on the right. But they correspond to these four looking things. Now it's useful to also get, it's not on the sign chart, but to get the y-intercept. Plug 0 in for all the x's. You get 1 over 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 minus 4, so negative 1 8. It's useful to have that point also. And when we connect it all together, we get a strange looking graph like that. This one's got three factors in the denominator. They correspond to 1, negative 2, and negative 4. All three are undefined. You put a, if you put numbers in, or if you just think about, okay, if I put a big enough number in, they're all going to be positive. And it generally alternates, though not always, between plus starting from the right, minus, plus, minus. We'll see in a later video when maybe when it won't alternate. Also useful, 0, comma, put 0 in for all the x's, and you get 0, comma, negative 8. I hope that's way down here somewhere. top is a constant, that gives us vertical horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. These u's here give me vertical asymptotes at 1 and negative 2 and negative 4. This plus and this minus tell us, the plus tells us that this is going on, but this minus tells us that something like that's happening because it's got to be going from under. And here we have a u with a minus on the left and a plus 
on the right, and this U has a plus on the left, and a minus on the right, and this U has a minus on the right, left, sorry, and a plus on the right. And when I put this stuff all together, uh, I guess I couldn't draw it so well because the minus 8 was too low, but something like that. Notice how this agrees with the sign chart. Negative, all this. Positive is this U-shaped thing. Negative is this upside down parabola looking thing. And positive is this branch of a hyperbola looking thing. So here's an expression, rational expression. It's got these three factors. And this is different from what we've seen before because the numerator for the first time is not a constant. It's got it's got variables in it. Well, we saw one example in the previous video where this had happened also, but this is the first one that has one expression in the numerator and two in the denominator. So I like to start by making a sign chart at one because x minus one is in the numerator, it's zero. But at minus two and minus four, it's undefined. You put a big enough positive number and all three of these things are positive. And again, it doesn't always alternate. We'll see that in a future lesson. But for now, it usually alternates. And it's a good idea to plug zero in and see you get you get um, f of zero is negative one over two times four, so negative one eighth. I like that because I get to put at least a a single point on the y-axis. I also get to put a point on the x-axis. I also get to put some vertical asymptotes at negative 4 and at negative 2. And I get to put a horizontal asymptote. If the numerator is constant, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. But anytime the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we're going to get a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Because if, if, if x gets big enough, this denominator gets so big that it, even though the numerator is getting big also, the denominator is getting so much bigger. It's kind of like, um, just to say, it's approximately x over x squared, which kind of like reduces to 1 over x. So for that reason, if the numerator's degree, which this one has degree 1, and the denominator has two x terms like that that get multiplied together, so degree is 2. You could imagine, what if I did multiply them together? I have x squared. Now, the u's are going to be useful here. The u has a negative to the left of it, so I'm going to make an arrow like that. And this u has a plus to the right of it, so I'll put an arrow like that. And this u has a plus to its left, so I'll put it like that. And this u has a minus on its right, so I'll go like that. And now I can start putting stuff together. Like, can I have some kind of thing like this? It's not going to cross the x-axis. It's be like a u-shaped thing. And over here, oh, I also have because I have this horizontal asymptote, there's a minus here, I can make an arrow like that underneath it. And this one has a plus, so I can make an arrow there. So everything seems to be going pretty nicely. But we run into a complication right here. This. You might say, wait a second, how do I... I can cross an asymptote? Well, yes. A horizontal asymptote, you can cross. Horizontal asymptote is really for large numbers. So for small numbers, we can cross it. So what's the purpose of the asymptote? Well, the asymptote is for large numbers, so I need to eventually be going down towards it, and that's why this goes up a little, and then ends up going back down. So it does all actually fit together. And that's what the graph looks like. Okay, the final thing I want to mention, this question, which looks a lot like the, first, the one I just did, but there is a difference because in this one we have these two factors can cancel out. So this becomes like 1 over x 
plus 2, which has an asymptote at minus 2 and a horizontal one at 0, and it looks, you know, something, something like that. But there was an x minus 1 here, so what this means is that it's not a vertical asymptote, but it is something known as a hole. If you plug 1 into this equation, into, into the equation after I've canceled out the x minus 1's, I'll say f of, f of x equals that. So I'll say f of 1 is 1 third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this point right here and replace it with an open circle. And that's how we deal with holes. We basically cancel out, draw the picture with ignoring the factors that got canceled out, but then at the very end, erasing the, the point that's not defined. If I were to make a sign chart for this, it would look like this. Basically, be the sign chart of 1 over x plus 2, which would just be all pluses except for when it Oops. Uh, at minus 2. I have, I have a u here also. But you see, this u is an asymptote, and it has this stuff going on, whereas this u corresponds to a hole because it sort of got canceled out. Okay, so that takes care of the of this type, and we'll see more in the future.